Chairman, I'd like to invite uh, Phil Boyd up to kind of give the board an update on the Atlas Waterfront Project. Welcome, Mr. Boyd. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. Um, kind of the similar format as uh, previous meetings, I'll just give you a synopsis and glad to answer any questions. So completed, and I say mostly, uh, because there's always little bits and pieces to finish up. The mass grading, uh, the mass earthwork movement um, is for the most part finished out there. Sewer and storm and water lines are completed and the shoreline stabilization is mostly completed, which is great on that ladder, that last one, because the water, we've accomplished our, our water, near water work before the water really gets us. We did have a, a time in there where the water came up and we had to stop work for a while, but now we're, we're back at it. The upcoming work, um, the buildings, uh, both the restroom building and the, the storage slash maintenance building, are uh, the foundations are in and they're starting to come out of the ground, and you'll see some pictures of that. It's interesting that they're actually going to start on the irrigation system next week, which kind of seems counterintuitive this time of year, but um, they're getting after it. The Riverstone to Atlas connecting trails, um, you'll start to see that also come out. That's that notch of trees that was removed between um, the upper area and the lower area. The landscape retaining walls will be moving on. Um, those and then water access steps as well. Vegetation obviously won't come in until later on in the in the spring. So I'll zip through a few pictures. I'm still kind of doing the before and after thing. So there's what it used to look like. That's what it currently looks like. Um, these are still the the rocks left to go in the landscape walls and the rockery, the shoreline stabilization walls. You can see down here at what we call the inlet. Um, there's a part of the foundation and they're working on pouring those steps and you can see over here they're um, working on continuing that shoreline stabilization through there. You can start to see the outlines of this is the walking trail and then over here is the, the riding trail. Future Atlas Drive that comes off of Atlas Road at the roundabout comes down <coughs> like that. And then these will obviously be homes in the in the future so where is block 13 on there block 13 area 13 is I'll show you in the next okay. couple more pictures yeah so this is looking the other direction what it looked like in December and you can kind of pay attention up in this area you see that there's the old soils the very dark soils that were in that area which were top soils and then this is what it currently looks like and you can see we mined the topsoils out of there and essentially bought, brought in beach material. And I use that term loosely because what people think of beach, they think of sand, but that would not be stable here. So because of the river flows, particularly during the spring runoff. So it's a, it's a boulder type material that's more stable. To Commissioner Armand's question, that area 13 is right down in here. Okay, thanks. And then you can you start to see that the parking lot comes up along this way that's the restroom building coming out of the ground or sorry that's the maintenance building um, this is the restroom building coming out of the ground so the parking lot sweeps through here uh, this is the prairie trail in the background and then atlas road comes up like this you can see suzanne the extension of suzanne shaping up through here they're currently putting in in this picture they were putting in some storm sewer and then the road continues on down this way and the Area 13, is that where the potential restaurant? It, uh, it is, and yeah. um, I think one of the, either later today, probably tomorrow, we'll talk a little bit about um, some potential PUD amend amendments that we might um, look for the board's direction on whether we want to pursue, pursue a PUD amendment to modify what can be um, used on that site. Uh, because the market is showing us something that we didn't anticipate. And as the board has said many, many times, we want to be nimble and adjust to the market. So that's one of the things we'll be asking for some guidance from the board. This is, again, a little a zoom in on the beach area. Um, and you can see here they're, they're mining out what was a big mound. Um, and then in this picture, you can see the mound is, is gone. And the uh, beach material is put, put in here. This is the dog park. This is the beach area in here. It's hard to see, but I'll show you a blow-up picture of it. Right here is the accessible swim ramp. Um, and right in here, you can see the rockery wall. This is where the accessible kayak launch will be. And you can see it's the river flow. When the water's up, the river 
will, the edge of the river will be right in here and we'll wrap around this corner. The launch will sit out in here, but it's in a little bit of a protected area. So when you're getting in your kayak and launching, particularly if you might be disabled, you want an area that's a little quieter flow of water. So we tucked it back in what was a little natural inlet in there. This is construction of the rockery wall, and you can see the magnitude of the, of the effort here. These are really substantially sized materials. This area is completed, so these are stream bed gravels, um, and this is the backfill that goes into the area. This will eventually get um, bladed back, and there'll be plantings put in, in here, and the excavator is sitting essentially where um, the walking trail will be. This is a shot looking back on the beach. So if you folks remember what this used to look like, it was covered with, with bushes and the concept was just to restore what it was there originally. This is the old railroad grade here. Um, and the beach area, there'll be picnic areas in each one of these areas and the shared use path through there. And you can see in the distance they're setting the rockery wall. Sorry to interrupt, but on that, while you're there, where, where would summer level be roughly in there? It, it would be right about down there. So there's quite a distance in oh, here. Yeah. Yeah. Th this won't all remain beach um, because it's a lot of beach. Um, and so uh, we've been looking at this with Bill a little bit, that there might be um, some thought about putting in some actual turf in here. Maybe not mowable turf, but something to soften the space up. There'll also be trees along in here. Uh, because otherwise it's just this big southern exposure that will get extremely hot in the summertime and not be friendly, you, you know, for folks to sit out there. Um, but that's a deep beach. That's about 80 feet, 90 feet right there. Yeah, would you anticipate any finer material there, or is it going to be that early force? It's the, the, um, the, the trick there is um, you, you, we would like to put finer material in there, um, but we're worried about it just ending up in the river. And because of the flow that goes through there. What we are going to do is go through and run a tine through there um, to fluff it up a little bit. We compacted it because that's what stabilizes everything underneath. Um, we'll run a tine through there, fluff it up, and then they'll pick out the big rocks in it. So probably things bigger than six inches will come out. But it's a challenge to, um, to size the material in there. Um, with the, the engineer, the coastal engineer that worked on this and did a, it's called a hydrodynamic analysis, size the material in there and that was our first reaction it was very big and he says well the science says that's how big it is if you want to put it in in a smaller one you get to take ownership on that and i don't want to own the the beach disappearing <laughs> and it's it's similar to what you see at nic beach it's just uh, it just needs to be fluffed up a little bit a little bit bigger material i don't know nic seems a lot a lot sandier to me. It, 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 some of it is, but it's also in, in some areas that the, the river flow isn't quite as fast as it. The river gets narrowed down through here. Yeah, the, we anticipate that reaction, folks. Why is it so rocky? And um, you're making a public investment, and you just can't take the risk of having the asset washed downstream, so to speak. Is it possible to put a little sandier area up further away from the river so it doesn't wash down? It, it's interesting you, you say that. We talked to, to um, Bill a little bit about that, and he's, he's thinking about it. Um, when the river comes up at, during flood stage, you can actually get water up into this area. The 100-year flood is somewhere up in here. Um, and so you, you get in these recurrence intervals. Does Bill want to be in the, the business of replacing the beach every so often? Um, again, that becomes a maintenance issue and expense for him, and so he's reluctant to take on those expenses just because of his budget situation. So is this on the tour tomorrow? It, yes, everything you see is, is here, yep. It, yeah, it'd be interesting to look at that. This is the, uh, the swim launch. They were actually uh, pl placing the concrete today, um, and to give you your, your, your bearings here a little bit, this area, there'll be a trail that comes down here. So if you were in a wheelchair, you could come down here. Um, this has a very slight grade to it. You can't see it very much for this picture. And then it gets into this point. You're in about 8 to 12 inches of water here. Uh, on the other side of that wall, you're in 2 feet of water. So when Bill and I had met with folks from the uh, disabled community, we heard a variety of things that um, they want to be able to, some folks want to be able to wheel into the water, some people want to be able to wheel 
uh, to a transfer wall. If you've been to some public pools, they have what's called a transfer wall. So you can wheel up to this and transfer yourself to this wall. Um, there's grips on it. And then you can transfer yourself into a couple of feet of water, and then you can get out into here and then you know, transfer yourself into deeper water. Um, if you wanted to reel all the way into the water, you could continue on down there. There'll be rails on here. Um, so you can wheel yourself down, and then if you want to come back out, um, you grab a hold of the rails and pull yourself out. Um, and there's also a rail along the end here uh, that would be, um, you know, you, you couldn't wheel off the end of it. Um, it, would, it would stop you from continuing on down. And there's landings in each of these areas, maneuverable, flat landings if you're in a, in a wheelchair. Also think about folks that just might be in a walker or just need a little bit of stability to get into the water was the concept of this. All the rails are removable. So um, when, when Bill gets to um, the end of the swimming season, he'll go and pull all the rails out. When the water comes up, it's going to submerge this thing, so you don't want logs hitting the rails. And then when the swim season starts back up, he'll go deploy um, the rails. So it's, it, uh, we, we're hopeful. The, the feedback we've gotten from the community is that they're very, the disabled community is very excited about um, using this. Oh, wrong direction. This is just another shot of them um, placing the concrete. That's it. Glad to answer any questions, and uh, as I think most of you know, there were those that can make it. We're going to tour the site tomorrow while it's sunny and uh, be able to see some more of this. So, is there a, any way to look at right now how you're coming in compared to budget? Excellent question. Um, we're below budget. Um, Good. Excellent answer. Yes. Yeah. It's uh, and and we have encountered unsuitable soils. Back to um, these pictures here where we anticipate in encountering some of them, it's really difficult to estimate what that quantity is. Um, so we had put a budget in, but we've, we've encountered way more than we had anticipated. And of course, they were in the worst of areas. Some of it were at the end of this parking lot right here. The other parts of it were right in this area where the road goes through. Um, so we were going way over our budget for those line items. But I think the board remembers um, La Riviere had offered to start processing on-site materials, both the topsoil and the material that you're seeing in here. So uh, we worked through those numbers with La Riviere and saved a tremendous amount of money. So La Riviere, um, on their original contract, um, were, were about $50,000 under their original contract. Overall, the project is, you know, in the $150,000 under the budget that the board had set for it. We think we've encountered most of the, we'll call them the, I won't use the term, but the, un, the unknown conditions. Because once you get out of the ground, most of the unknown conditions, you know, moving forward, we don't anticipate seeing a bunch of other uh, things. And so I think the talking with the bill, if there's opportunity to add more landscaping, um, that was one of the, the um, features that we were cutting pretty tight and thin to keep the project within budget. But now as we're getting towards the end, I think he may be back to ignite, we may be back to ignite saying, we're under your original budget and we would like you to consider allowing us to go spend some of it on landscaping because that's where we had, I don't want to say short changed it, but really put a, the least amount of investment in the, in the park area. How's the mining going on on Atlas Bluff? It's, uh, it's going good. We're, we've, we've stopped for the most part because, we, because we've made enough topsoil material. Um, we have been working with uh, Steve Gillett, who's a partner of the city with DEQ with his brownfield money. He's doing some testing on the soils for uh, metals content. We don't anticipate any, but it's going to end up in the park space, and you don't want, the city doesn't want, and we don't want any long-term metals liability down in the public space. So DEQ is testing that material with their funding to confirm there's no metals in it. Um, so then we can use that material uh, on site. And there's, there's, another, there's other opportunities in that whole Atlas Bluff area to continue to make materials. Um, it gets kind of a complicated discussion um, because you would be investing money to make the material, but you may not see a return on the investment until you sell the materials. Um, Tony and I have talked a little bit about it, but it would require further discussion with the board. Thanks. Thank you.
That was the Atlas Bluff, the same thing as Mount Hink? It is, yeah. Right. We're supposed to call it Atlas Bluff, though, because it sounds... <laughs> Right. Yeah. Phil, could you go to your last slide? Right there. Is the Day Docks Marina down there, is that part, or do we get, did that get taken out? That, that is taken out. Yeah. So what would be the cost of that? It, it um, I, I, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. For some reason, I think that this dock was in the, the $200,000 range. Um, docks are expensive to to build um, you obviously could make it smaller to fit within a budget that the board might choose to make it to fit into the reason I asked is because area 15, 13 up there might be more marketable if it had some kind of day dock parking good good point I mean if it didn't when there was no bids for it was that correct correct we, we took it out of the scope of work. Right. When we had shown this image, and I probably should take the dock out of here, there was um, uh, several members of the public that captured it as it was going in. It, it is, you know, what will be there. And they noticed how, narrow, how it narrowed up the river mm -hmm. here. So they were very concerned about that, contacted Bill Greenwood. And Bill explained it's just a concept. You know, we haven't chased a permit on it. Um, if it is something that you would be contemplating we would need to go get an encroachment permit it would not stay in that configuration we would move it a little closer to shore mm -hmm. um, and it would come off in in this direction through here is there any grandfathering from the former mill site because there was actually some kind of uh, access point there wasn't there Th there was a landing there that they would um, it was used for a long time by pulling barges up to mm -hmm. it uh, in the title report that we looked at, we didn't see, and I've looked for permits through here, asked Department of Lands about encroachment permits, and we can't find any. I think back in the day, those things just happened by the upland property owners, so they don't, we don't see them in, their, in the record now. I don't anticipate it would be an issue to secure an encroachment permit for the, from the state that didn't narrow up the channel for navigation issues, which, as you guys know, there's pilings that run all the way through here, which we're not removing. Um, as part of the project yeah what whatever uses were there they probably were in there before they had permitting so that's probably long gone yeah i've heard around 42 43 dollars a foot for concrete docks you you would be we're we're est currently <laughs> estimating docks at 65 dollars a square foot okay Ooh. yeah i'm surprised at that All yeah right. There, it's like a, a lot of things right now, the, the cost of materials and whatnot. And, and that's when we estimated. That includes pilings and all, all the different. Yeah, that was just dock only. That yeah. wasn't pilings and installation. Yeah. I, I agree with Mick. It'd be, it would be nice if at some point there was, there was funding available to do a scaled-down version of the dock there and have a day-use dock or something. What, I saw objections when we had the, the open houses, but most of that was when I talked with people. They, they perceived it as uh, being, having access taken away from private moorage, not necessarily with a day use stock. I didn't hear the objections to that. Yeah, the, the, the objections we've heard is, is just in the location of it in the channel. Yeah, I could see what, that. What would happen if you moved a little further northwest? In this area? Yeah. So it's wider there. It, it is, and that we little, you got that little cove up there. If you went up there, you might have a little wider space in the river. We could part part of the idea of locating it here was the proximity to the restrooms. Sure. Um, and then also, sometimes these places become loading places for your friends and family. So you might go launch your boat, and then where you launch your boat, it's a challenge to for your friends to park. If you think of Higgins Point, Higgins Point gets filled up with, mm -hmm. so folks will launch their boat there, and then they'll go pick their friends up somewhere along Coeur d'Alene Lake Drive or go into town and pick them up there where there's more parking. I'm just thinking if the, if the concern is the narrowing of the channel, put it a little wider spot up there, and it would be, probably be less <coughs> concerned. Yeah, that would add some benefit, too, to the back to the earlier point yeah. about Area 13 here. And you're still right on the park area there, too. Yeah. and you'd wander down the trail and come to here. Yeah. Just a thought. Well, maybe if if the you know the the long lead item to make those decisions are the encroachment permit, mm -hmm. 
And so maybe what I'll do is, is speak with Bill about moving forward with the encroachment permit. We've done his encroachment permits all for all the other facilities in here, so it's not a heavy lift to put that encroachment permit together um, and, and uh, you know, size a dock that might be less than $200,000 um, and then just move forward with getting that permit. And I would think any, 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 any kind of a dock we're talking next year, there's no way a dock would go in this year. Probably I mean, not unless you found I, one I don't think on be sale. Time to, to get, have a dock company build it. <laughs> the, uh, um, re remember, there are two docks up here um, that are part of this project. Um, they're poly float docks. Um, I can't remember if they have concrete decking on them or not. I think they do. And where are those at? They're up at the dog park. Okay. Um, they actually border the dog park, and the function of them is to allow your dog to jump off the dock. But they're not. A dock that a boat could hook onto. Or no, because they'll be uh, they'll surrounded by a, a boom, yeah, yeah. a log boom, okay. to prevent th that exact thing happening. The the other, the the dog park had the log boom around it. Um, the budget was such that it wouldn't allow awarding the log boom that continues through this area here to protect the beach. And so when Ignite, uh, uh, when the city awarded the project, um, they didn't award that segment because um, it, was, it would have pushed us beyond the funding and kept our contingency um, in, in place. The numbers that I quoted you earlier um, anticipate installing that log boom because we, myself and Bill, I think the city thinks that's very important in front of this beach area so boats don't navigate into that area or beach themselves there. Mm -hmm. um, and it also anticipates uh, awarding the irrigation pump station, which remember the, the logic behind that is it reduces the, his expense, the city's parks department expense for irrigating the park substantially. It has about a, I think it was a six or seven year return, um, uh, rate of re return on investment. Um, so both of those things have been important, have been bill, bills number one and number two, uh, things if he could add, he would head there and then his third one is landscaping. It didn't seem like that that pump was that big of a return when you figure the cost of the pump. It was maybe it is in six or seven years it pays back. It was down the road. Yeah, their their irrigation bill, and, and again I'm kind of going from from memory is is something like I think we've estimated it at like forty some thousand dollars uh, a year here potentially. Yeah. For other questions or comments. I guess we'll talk about the, the dock down the road when we see some more numbers, right? Yeah, and, and what we'll do is, as we're, we're getting a little more refined here, is that this is helpful for me to go back and talk to Bill and talk with Tony about it. gives us a little bit of direction where the board might be thinking about, and we can start putting some uh, ideas menu, menu together for you guys to think about. Thanks, Phil. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Phil.